everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial, and today we are painting the Slan Star Master. Yes, here he is. He's absolutely fantastic, and he's just taken a little trip out of his chair because I have, in fact, built this as a sub-assembly. I'd like to say that I planned it, but it would have been more elegant if I had. Or maybe it wouldn't have been. <laughs> it's been sent to me earlier as part of the Seraphon Army Set by Games Workshop, so a massive thank you to them for this. And now we get to paint this breathtaking centerpiece for your Seraphon. I know you're waiting for Croak. It will happen, I promise. Anyway, massive thank you to them for that. And he has been primed in Wraithbone. And yes, we have, as already mentioned, done a sub-assembly. I'm going to mount him on a little 40 mil base in just a little bit. Uh, we'll paint him later. But for now, we're going to focus on the chair. And the colour that we're going to be using first is Mechanicus Standard Grey. And we're going to be applying this over the top of all of the stone on the chair. Now, we would go for a contrast paint here normally, but there isn't a bluish grey that's dark enough in the contrast range. And rather than making you do 3,000 different layers of various different colours to get down to this colour, Mechanicus Standard Grey is the ideal one here for the stone. So we're just going to apply this all over the top, just as I'm doing here. And then once that is done, we shall return. But trust me, this is a Contrast Plus painting tutorial. It might take one or two coats, but if it does, that's all okay. So with that done, we've got our Mechanicus Standard Grey all over, as you can see, all over the stone of the chair. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add some stippling. We're going to go straight in for this rather than doing any shading because, well, we're going to do a little bit of shading later on, but there's different kinds of shading that you need. And we want that really stone-like texture that we have on the chair. So in order to do this stippling, what we're going to do is we're going to take a really old brush. And if you don't have any old brushes, you can always grab uh, any sort of dry brush or something. I've got this medium shade brush here, which is very, very old. And I've got a pair of scissors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to around about there, just where there's enough most stiffness in the in the brush. So you don't want to do it up here because you don't want the brush to be able to bend like this. You want to go right down towards here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the scissors to just cut away all those bristles. Like that. So now you should have a pretty stubby little brush. Just wanna make sure we just get the rest of that off there. Once we've got our stippling brush, what we want to do is we want to take some administratum grey. We're going to pop this on our brush, then on some tissue paper, we're going to stab it in like this until it gets to the kind of consistency we would want, which is around about there. And then we're just going to start stippling this. over all the stone. So with that administratum grey stippling all applied, we've got this beautifully textury looking stone chair. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some Ulthwin grey. We're gonna do much the same thing. However, we're gonna be really selective about where we do this. So. What we're going to do is we're going to do this mostly 
along sharp edges in the stone. So with that Ulthwin grey stippling applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to add some shades in. And this is pretty much going to finish the chair. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Targor Raid Shade. I'm going to pick out some areas that we want to add a little bit of extra colour into. So some of these areas include any of the under triangles, like that one there. one there. I'm going to go around doing all the triangles like this. Just the bottom row. Like that sort of thing. We're also going to apply this over the top of these kind of snake patterns. Back here. Like that sort of thing. And we're going to apply this over the decorative features. Along the sides of the chair. And with that Targor Raid shade all applied, we're then going to take some Athonian Camo shade and we're going to apply this over the top of the snake patterns here on the front. Like that. We're going to apply this in this little section just here on both sides. Like so. We're going to apply this over this kind of swirly nip, swirly bit here. Like that. And we're going to apply this over the top of these. Little stone reliefs here on the back. And so with that now done, we're then going to take some null oil and we're going to apply this in various different little areas. And this kind of is optional, but uh, it's kind of just going to make some of these bits pop. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the null oil over the back piece in here. Like 
like that sort of thing. We're going to apply this over the kind of armrests. And over the stone steps. don't need to do this area because that's where our slan's going to sit. We're going to apply this over the back. like this and so with that done all of the stonework of the chair is now finished except there are a bunch of details all over it which is what we're going to do next so the color we're going to be using next is mantis warriors green i'm going to be applying this over the top of all of the mossy groves scattered around the model just like this. And so with that Mantis Warriors Green all applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Saigor Brown and Wildwood. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of our creeping vines. Now the best way to do this is to pick one to start on and then just follow it through until you've completed it. So I'm going to come up, for example, on this one, up to there like that. Like this and it's going to take a little while because there's a lot of these so just take your time be nice and methodical. So with that all done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Dark Angels Green and we're going to use this to pick out all the little tiny leaves on all the vines.
just like this. And so with that Dark Angels green all applied, we're then going to take some Orc Flesh and we're going to apply this over the top of all of our remaining leaves and grasses. So with that now done, we're going to move on from the leaves and foliage for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some Luxion purple and we're going to apply this over the top of this stonework just down here. Just whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to apply this over the top of the large horns. So with that skeleton horde applied, we're then going to take some Leviathan purple and we're going to apply this over the top of the stonework down here. And we're going to get a nice smooth coat of this over the top of this ring that goes around the middle bit. like that and then what we're going to do is wash the brush grab some leviathan purple on our brush and then we're going to paint it all over the top of the central dial and then we're going to blend it out so we're going to take some of that paint off so we're just going to load up the brush with leviathan purple get this all over like that then we're going to wash the brush and in the middle Lift off some of that paint. Just like that. And then we're also going to apply the Leviathan purple over the top of all of our remaining kind of engine type things. So we've got these little nodes. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Retributor armor and we're going to paint this up with quite a few details. In fact, almost all the ones that we have remaining on the actual chair itself. So we've got all of the areas such as these caps on the large horns. Like that. We've got areas such as these little eyelets. On the chair itself, as well as
these little bits to trim. We've got the hanging decorations. And that sort of thing. We've got the star chart on the back here. Might need a little smaller brush for that. We've got these little dividers. Put these bits around the sort of purple engines. We've got the bowls. We've got this device up here. We've got the framing around here. As well as any other areas you wish to be gold. So with all of that Retributor armor applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to shade it all, but we're also going to add this color to a couple of extra details. This is Gilliman Flesh, and we're going to be applying this over the top of the bugs and grubs. In there. like that. And we're going to use, as mentioned, the Gilliman flush to shade all the gold. So with that Gilliman flesh all applied, we're now gonna work on the skink just here. And the color we're gonna be using for this is a roughly three parts contrast medium to one part caribou crimson. over the top of the entirety of our skink. And with that now done, we're then gonna take some frost heart and we're gonna apply this over the top of our other skink. So with that frost heart applied, we're then going to take some Storm Fiend and we're going to apply this over the scales on the back. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Flesh Terror's Red and we're going to apply this over this little frog. And with that now done, we're going to take two colours, Bad Moon Yellow and Striking Scorpion Green. And we're going to apply these at the same time over top of these feathers back here. So we're going to apply the Bad Moon Yellow on there first. 
like that. Then going to wash the brush, grab a little bit of striking scorpion green. We're going to apply this towards the tips. Of the feathers like that. Add a little bit more striking scorpion green towards the tips. Just like that. So with those feathers done, we're then going to take some Eandon yellow. I'm going to apply this to the fins on the top of our blue skink. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this to, well, pretty much all of our remaining details. So we have all of the little junk on the plate here. Like that we have the little fingernails and toe claws of our skinks. We have the eyes. Head. So with that done, we've got all of our base coats on, on our Star Master's chair. So what we need to do now is add a few shades just to take it down to that War Hipster battle ready standard. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Pox Walker and Coelia Green Shade. And we're going to use these at your discretion. But what we're going to do is we're going to apply these over the top of the leaves and things like that. So I'm going to start with some Pox Walker. I'm just going to apply this over the top like this of this big leaf just here. Like that. And then I'm going to wash the brush. I'm going to grab a bit of Coelia Green Shade and I'm going to apply this in there as well. Like that. On these large leaves down here, I'm just going to apply some we need a green shade like this. I'm going to wash the brush. I'm going to grab some pox walker. I'm going to add this over this leaf here. I'm also going to add some of this over top of this moss. Just there like that. I'm just going to work my way around like that across all of our greenery. Add a little bit of Coelia green shade in here. To this one. Some there. Like 
You don't have to do this for all of them. Just adding a little bit of extra color and variation into our leaves. So with that now done, we're then gonna take some Drooky Violet and we're gonna apply this over the top of the engines. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Saigo brown mix. I'm going to use this to add a little bit of blending on our horns at the top here. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up our brush and from the tip down, let me do this on the back here, is we're going to take it down to around about there. We're going to wash the brush. And then we're just going to absorb some of that extra paint and feather away at the transition like that. We're going to do this on the other side as well. And with that now done, for our final shade, we're going to take some Tiran Blue. We're going to apply this over top of our skink. So with that now done, the chair is at what I would call a war hipster battle ready. And it looks pretty fantastic, even if I do say so myself. However, we're not gonna leave it there. No, we're gonna take it to the next level. I'm gonna do this by adding some layers and some highlights. Now there aren't many, but there are some. So the first one we're gonna add is some thinned down blood reaver flesh. And we're gonna use this to effectively do a relayer slash highlight on all of our wood. So we're just gonna start picking out our vines and this way what we can do is we can smooth out any inconsistencies and also add a little bit of brightness into all of our wood. We still want to leave some of the dark shading in there. So with that Blood Reaver flesh all applied, as you can see, we've got lovely, lovely wood all over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Night Quester flesh now. I'm gonna use this to add a couple of little highlights here and there. Now you don't wanna go overboard here, but what you do wanna do is you wanna just pick out the little areas of of edges here and there. So 
So with that now done, as you can see, we've got some absolutely gorgeous looking vines. So what we're going to do is going to move on to our skink. And the colour we're going to be using is Baharoth Blue. I'm going to use this to relayer all the skink, all of the skink's skin. Can't say that fast three times. So with that done on this blue skink, it actually looks pretty fab. So what we're going to do is move on to our pink skink and we're going to use some thinned down wraithbone to relay all of his skin. So with that done, we've got one last relayer to apply and it's going to be some thinned down Retributor armor. I'm going to apply this over the top of our large gold details. And so with all of that Retributor armor applied, we're then going to take some Liberator Gold. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the gold. So with that done, all of the gold is now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on the horns. And the colour we're going to be using for this is Screaming Skull. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do lots and lots of lines coming down from the tips. Of the horns. Like this sort of thing to give them some real texture. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little tiny amount of Flash Gets Yellow. I'm going to add a little line for each of the skink's eyes. So with that flash gets yellow applied, we're then going to take some thin down Dawnstone. We're going to use this to highlight all of our black details. And so with that now done, we're then going to take a tiny little dot of Administratum Grey. I'm going to add this to the sharpest points on the black. 
like that, and we're also going to have a little dot of this in the back corner of the eye on each of our skinks. So with all of those black details finished, now what we're going to do is move on to those engines. And what we want to do is we want to add a little bit of a kind of glowingness to them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Bathurst blue, we're going to thin it down with three or four parts of water. And then in all of the cracks on the sort of engine bits, we're going to drop this Bathurst blue into that recess. So with that done, just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some cacophony purple and we're going to again thin this down with sort of three or four parts of water. I'm going to use this to kind of add a little bit of a glazing layer over the top of the brightest part. of our engines. We've got that one there on the front. And similarly with the Cacophony Purple, what we're going to do is we're going to add a few little highlights to our engines on the underside. And so with that now done, we're then going to take some Slanesh Grey and we're going to thin this down with four parts water. And we're going to apply this with a little glaze to the middle. Of our gem there, like that, and then we're also going to add some little areas of extra light on our engines under there. So with that Slanesh Grey applied, we're then going to take a little bit of Olthwin Grey. I'm going to add this the little dot right in the middle on the front there. I'm just going to use this to pick out some of the edges. That sort of thing. And so just to finish off all of these purple and glowy blue bits, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Tyran blue. We don't need very much here. And we're just going to apply this over the top of all of these areas. And 
This is just going to blend all the colours together. Add a little bit more depth. So with that done, our chair is now finished. So what we can do is we can pop it to one side. It doesn't have to be the left, it could be to the right, it could be forward, it could be behind you. But now it's time to work on the slan itself. And this is really gonna tie the whole thing together. You, you watch. <laughs> so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start off with some gut ripper flesh. And we're gonna apply this over the top of all of the slan's skin. With that gut ripper flesh all applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some pox walker and we're going to apply this over a much more select area. So we're going to apply this over the top of the spines of his feet. Like that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Like so. We're going to apply this over his chin. Apply this over the top of the top of his head. Like that and then over the top of his kind of backs of his arms and his back itself what we want to do is we want to apply the pox walker but then make sure that we blend it out into the gut ripper flesh so we're going to start here on the back of this arm and apply the pox walker like this i'm going to come up to around about there and bring it around a little bit more on his arm like so, we're going to wash the brush and then just here along this arm, we're just going to smooth out that transition so it's not as vivid. And then we're going to apply this over the top of his hands, but again, just ignoring the webbed parts but we're then going to blend this out around his hand the palm of his hand I should say like that and then we're going to take in 
the next kind of part of his body. And do this bit as well. Come down his bum. Like that. I'm going to come up here, playing the pox walker. Which is just past the halfway mark, like that. We're then going to wash the brush. And then we're going to smooth out the transition, like that. And then we're going to do the same thing on the leg, only this time what we're going to do is we're going to come up to around about there. Like that. Wash the brush. And then around the knee, we do a bit of that feathering off and taking off the excess so we get that blend down like so. And then you just want to replicate this on the other side as well. So with that pox walker all applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Creed camo and we're going to do kind of the same thing but a lot less of it. So we're going to apply the Creed camo over the top of these bits on the legs, but we're not going to go all the way up the spines like that. I'm going to wash the brush. I'm just going to smooth out that transition just a little bit, should we need to. Do the same thing over here. Take the Creed camo. Apply it up to around about that knuckle there. And bring it down. Wash the brush. And then blend it out. You don't need to do anything to the chin, but on the top of his head, what we're going to do is load up the brush and we're going to apply this over the top. Like that. Then we're going to wash the brush and then across the very middle of his head we're going to lift off the paint and once again just feathering away Just like that. And then we need to go over the top of his back. And this time we're going to come down to around about there, there and there on the back. Around about there. Around about there. Around about there. And around about there. Wash the brush. Then we're going to smooth out those transitions. So with that Creed camo all applied, we're then going to take some black Templar. And we're going to apply this over the top of the Slan's eyes. including 
the bottom eyelid. So that black Templar all applied, we're then going to take some Naz Drag Yellow. I'm going to apply this over his big chubby cheeks. So with that now done, we're then going to take some Gilliman Flesh and we're going to apply this over the top of his bottom lip. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion and we're actually going to do a little bit of freehanding here. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply some kind of sort of lightning-esque vein-like things coming down the recesses of his head. Like this. And another one going down here. Not particularly perfect, but that's not what we're after right now. We're just after a little a bit of an outline. back of the body, we're going to do the same thing. And so with that Black Legion all applied, it might look a little bit rough, but don't worry, because what we're going to do is we're going to take some Ogryn Camo next, and we're going to add some more markings over the top of his head. So what we want to do here is we want to start with a little kind of blob of it just there, and we want to add another tiny little bit. Coming down the snout, like that, and then over the top of his head, 
want to kind of just go a little bit nuts. So we're going to trace it out really. Like this, and then we're going to start blocking it in. It looks a little bit rough but it will take a couple of thin coats just to smooth it out I want to do some Going along the sides as well. And so with that Ogryn camo applied, we're then gonna take some Screaming Skull. I'm gonna use this to add a little bit more structure in there. And so with that done, we're then going to take a roughly three parts pox walker to one part Cassandora yellow mix. And we're going to apply this over the top of the entirety. Of our slam. So with that now done, it's time to add some brightness back into his skin. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron rack skin and we're going to start applying this over the top of all of our pale gut ripper flesh areas. Just avoiding anywhere where the shades and that have settled. And with that ion rack skin applied, we're then gonna take some deep kin flesh and we're gonna do a much narrower version of this over the top of those same areas.
And so with that all done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Strachan green and we're going to use this to highlight the darker green areas. Slan. So with that done, all of our green is now finished. Now you don't need to worry about the back because when we stick him into the chair, you won't be able to see any of this, but you will see the little bits that come down the legs and that's what we've done. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some Cassandora yellow and we're gonna apply this over the top of his cheeks. And with that done, we're then gonna take a little bit of slan ash gray and use this to highlight the eyelids around his eyes. And with that then done, we're then going to use some Yerial Yellow to highlight the inside of all of the eyes. And with that done, we can then use some Screaming Skull to pick out the teeth. as well as highlight the underside of his cheeks. And so with that done, it's now time to finally move on to the last couple of details. And one of these is all of the ropes. And the color we're gonna be using for them is Flesh Terror's Red. And so with that all done, we're then gonna take some thinned down Retributor armor. I'm gonna paint this over top of all of his jewelry. And with that all done, we're then gonna take some thinned down Dawnstone. I'm gonna apply this over the top of the skull. And with that done, whilst we're waiting for the Dawnstone to dry, we're going to take some Flesh Terrors Red. I'm going to apply this inside the eye sockets. So with that done, we can now once again take Gilliman Flesh and use this to shade all of the gold. Now 
And with that now done, we're then going to use some Coelia green shade to shade the skull. And with that Coelia green shade applied, we can now add our final couple of highlights. And the first one of these is going to be some thinned down Liberator Gold. And what we're going to do is on the main shields and things here, we're actually just going to pretty much do a full relayer. Like this, just avoiding the recesses on the large front facing details. Like that, whilst leaving the field of it. Same shaded metal. And on these side medallions here, we're going to effectively do the same thing. But for all the other gold details, we're going to add a little edge highlight. And with that done, just to finish him off, we're going to take some Administratum Grey and we use this to highlight the skull. So with that done, we can pop the slan off his base and we can now attach him to his chair where he should have been all along. I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of super glue here. Pop it on that bit of leaf that we haven't painted. And a little bit in each of our little guide pegs. Like so. And then we can just slot him in like that and what do you know it looks amazing <laughs> so with our slan and his chair now fully reunited and fully painted all that's left to do is the base and well we're not going to cover this in too much detail because well we've already done it we've already done all of the techniques that we're going to be using here so we're going to be doing the stone the same as we did on his chair we're going to be doing the wood the same as we did on the back and we're going to be doing the leaves the same as we did on the chair so if you want to know how to do those you can just rewind this video or alternatively you can do it in a completely different way to match the rest of your army it's entirely up to you of course And so with that base complete using the same recipes as we did on the slans palanquin as I have found out it's actually called techniques the slan star master is now finished coalesced nonetheless rather than the starborn although I feel like I probably should do a starborn one soon because it's a really cool scheme I'm really really pleased with this I think he looks amazing I'm really 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 happy with how it came together especially once you slotted him into the chair Oh, it's just absolutely glorious. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you'd like to support me further, you absolutely can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, just like these bosses have done scrolling up on the screen before you, whose continued support helps me continue to make all the wonderful content that you enjoy. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube channel member by clicking on the join button on the channel page or just below this video like these wonderful, amazing people have done. 
and if you really like this video and you just want to shoot me a little thanks you can click on the thanks button just below this video don't forget to share it like it comment on it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to make sure you stay up to date don't forget to click the bell icon thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all very soon in the next one happy wargaming <laughs>